Hey everybody, Clay Orr here with another custom video tutorial on how to prep your figure. Uh, in my last video, you saw that I disassembled Batrock. I'm going to be making a crossfire. You'll see the whole series of these videos. Sorry, it's a little blurry here. I'm trying to get it where I, you can actually see my hands in this because it actually makes a lot more sense to actually see what I'm doing in this and it doesn't anything else. You'll be good to go once we start actually dribbling stuff. So I just thought I'd go through real quick on my, uh, my process on how I do this. Basically, I get my pieces completely disassembled and figure out what I want to grind away first. I get the inside of the shoulder pits, the inside of the crotch, my bicep, my, uh, my, my knee joints, a hand. I'm going to show you how to dremel out the little bitty, uh, the peg that goes on the hand to actually get it. This, uh, this might be handy in other situations if you want to do a hand swap, if you want to put radioactive mans, what is green translucent hands, and you want to put them on Sentry or Hyperion or something. Yeah, those are really hard to find, the fist hands. No one wants the, the, the jerk off hand. That'll be handy to do that. You'll be able to do that. If you have the right paint, you can paint it and make it look fantastic. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and just jump right into this. The uh, first thing I'm gonna do is get the crotch. The crotch piece is what I'm gonna do first. So the thing that I like to do first is hold it together. I'm gonna get my barrel bit with the coarse, blow out my Dremel a little bit. Um, I'm gonna put my barrel bit on my Dremel here. Uh, so you can see that. And I'm gonna attempt to actually do this on camera. So bear with me if I go off camera a little bit, but here we go. Uh, I'm going to dremel the inside of the crotch out. Um, and you may see me test fit it with the crotch uh, to make sure that there's enough clearance with this. And here we go. Now I got it pretty, pretty rough right here, I'm trying to kind of bite off the pieces that I got uh, dremeled. You can fix it up with sandpaper later. This is just to get rough stuff out. And as you can see, um, maybe you can't, that little piece, one of the pieces I dremeled is actually in that hole. So you get your X-Acto knife, just kind of. It should come right out because it's just freshly dremeled away uh, and any stuff that's in that hole that will prevent you from putting your crotch piece back in there. So and you're going to set your, uh, the way the bucky cap mold is, that little nipple, that little peg um, right here. Uh, it goes in this hole as you can see in the crotch. So boop, put that back in there, squeeze it together. It's gonna be a little loose. Uh, this is also a way you can fix that if you wanted to take your figures apart and actually fix that. So it looks like it's got a pretty good little crotch gap right there. Well, let's actually take a look and see if it's rubbing anywhere. It looks like it's pretty good on both sides. So you're clearing completely on the leg parts, uh, which is exactly what you want on the crotch. So. That is how you like dr dremel it out with the the barrel dremel. Um, then you get your uh, your sandpaper here. So basically, you're rubbing it down until it gets you know baby shit smooth. So there you go. All right. So for all intents and purposes, uh, the crotch is done uh, with the dremeling. We're gonna put this over here and move on to the next piece, which is the shoulder pit. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drill out the inside of the shoulder cavity right here and get it nice and pretty and actually when you put the shoulder ball back in there, it won't touch any part of it. Uh, and then once you put super glue on top of that, you'll be good to go on that. So I'm uh, going to do that real quick. I've got my um, is a ball sander. So here's me sh uh, fucking something dremeling.
All right, so what you want to do is you want to drill an out and around the inside right there. You want to drill it down at the lower part. You want to drill it at the top where the shoulder is going to be rubbing. There's a couple of spots where you can always see. You always get a bunch of crap on your desk, so just brush it off onto the floor onto your cat. Because she's always waiting. Waiting for blood. All right, so you uh, you just want to get it just enough where you can see where you can actually uh, not have any spot that's going to rub. And once you get it uh, pretty enough where you, you're pretty sure it's not going to rub, I'm actually going to test. I've got my uh, little shim. Remember that we had the last video? You put the shim on it like a graduation hat. And uh, you're going to put it in, obviously, in the side that we just dremeled out and you can see that you've got a lot more room on that side than you do on that side which is okay that's just kind of the way that the shoulder ball fits it's also upside down um, you just want it to be not rub right there so you might want to dremel out just a little bit more on this front side right here and go back and dremel out that front part just a hair and I'm going to change my bit real quick to the uh, the barrel bit just because it's actually going to be sanding something that's flat, straight. All right, so I got it ground out like that now. And I put our shoulder ball back in there. And should be good. That's normally about how many tries it takes to get it perfect like that for me. It's never on the first try. I never, never gotten it perfect like that. But there you go. As you can see, you got enough space. What you're gonna do now is you're gonna get your, uh, your sandpaper, kind of smooth that up, make it pretty and then move on from the, uh, the shoulder pit to the bicep. I'll show you how to do that. All right, so the next piece I'm gonna be dremeling down is the actual bicep. This is the right bicep. It doesn't matter which one, they're both exactly the same except the reverse of each other. Uh, what we're gonna be doing is dremeling out that fatty tissue right there, the actual bicep muscle part of it. Uh, just dremeling that down so when it goes into the shoulder part, that part right there that's actually smoothed out so it can actually move, it touches a little bit. So you're going to dremel out just enough where it's not going to touch, but uh, leave, leave a lot in there to make it uh, not noticeable. So I'm going to be using uh, this bit, the sandy ball bit. That's the best one for this job I've found because it does fits into crevices. So I'm going to be grinding that out. Here we go. And you don't really have to test that. It works fine just like it is, but I like to dremel it out just so there's absolutely no paint rub. I know a lot of people have the paint rub problem there. Uh, it's gonna have a little debris in there. So what I like to do is get a... Uh... All right, so I got some new sandpaper for it. Uh, this is a thousand grit. And you can't see it, but you're gonna have to trust me. I'll rip it off, fold it over. Um, and you can even take a little bit off the edge so it's right off the top right there just so it doesn't rub either i like to do that too so here's me sanding it just a little bit all right so i got that done just a little bit off the top here uh 
so you can see when it gets on the when it gets on the shoulder ball piece, uh, you'll have enough room to actually move it about. Uh, and you're actually going to paint that and prep it before you even put the bike back together. So there is the bicep piece. The next one, uh, the shoulder ball. This might be the most beneficial to some people. This is um, people say Dremel the joints. This is what they're referring to. Um, this I'm going to use my dentist burr bit for the one that looks like it's actually like a pretty co really coarse it's not even coarse it's like a saw blade almost so I'm gonna use that I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna open push the ball to one side then I'm gonna fucking put this guy right here just dremel it kinda like you're coloring you, uh, you just it'll look like you're coloring cuz it'll be a different color it'll be a lighter purple lighter whatever color you're working with and uh, you just kind of want to get it all smooth all straight um, no big holes no big chunks or anything missing in any of it you just want to make it absolutely smooth and you see how much uh, clearance you have between the the disc and the actual shoulder ball so there'll be a lot more once you get done and once you get done you're gonna twist it back over and do the other side that way you make sure all of the visible part of the shoulder ball is done and then when you put it back in no matter how far uh, the arm goes up and down you'll have a uh, paint rub you won't have paint rub and then when you paint it you'll have paint sticking to it so here you go So you can see I've dremeled it out just enough. I'm going to clean it up with some sandpaper just enough where there's clearance. When you move it, you'll see you have a little clearance right there. So you're going to turn the ball all the way over and you can actually see where the joint, you can see it very well, has actually started being sanded about right there. Uh, and drill the rest of that up to the other side of the peg. Here you go. Alright, dropped it in my lap. That's alright. So basically, you have a fully prepared shoulder ball joint. Get your sandpaper, go over it real quick. All right, and then there you go. You have a fully sanded. Uh, you could sand up a little bit prettier. I'm actually gonna do that, but I'm not gonna do it on the camera just because it's exactly what I'm doing and just kind of sanding up the edges to make it pretty. Just lose little pieces of plastic, you want those gone. So that's your shoulder ball. Uh, your next piece is gonna be pretty much the same thing. Uh, it's your ankle. Um, you're going to use the same piece, same drill bit, and you're going to grind away the same thing, rotate it, make sure you get it uh, all the way. Um, just enough clearance, you don't want to dremel it too much down. Uh, and then there you go. So here's the leg, the, the ankle. Okay. 
Get all your crap out of there. Remember, sweep it onto your cat. Get it out of your lap. Uh, and then you get your sandpaper, smooth it up just like the shoulder ball. Another thing you want to do is sand the outside of the uh, the heel, I guess, the ankle, the actual ankle. Sand it down just a little bit while you've got your sandpaper. So when you put it back on the foot, it's not gonna rub the foot when you put it back on there. When you when you rotate the ankle rocker, the ankle pivot, the swivel ankle, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah, sorry about my left-handedness. I know it gets in the way of the camera here. So you got your ankles right there. Uh, the hand is gonna be the same way. Actually, I'm not even. Uh, no, fuck it. I'll show the hand. It's pretty quick. Hand do it the same way you just did the ankle. <laughs> and there's your hand joint. Uh, sand it down perfectly with the Dremel. Again, go through it like that. This probably won't take just the, the time of me talking to get it to actually probably pull most of the shit out. You just want to sand it down just a little bit just to get the excess shit out of there. You can probably actually get it with the X-Acto knife, kind of clip it and damn. Got your hand done. Uh, and then you're going to get your knee joints I'm only gonna do one of these because uh, the elbow joints are exactly the same. Uh, the way that I do it is because it's already out like that, you're just gonna go over the outside, just barely getting something, just barely kind of grinding it off. It'll turn a different color because it's being sanded, so that's how you know you've kind of got it done. So here's the knee joint, same thing as the elbow. Alright, knee joints done, smooth out of just a little bit of sandpaper. To get your knee joint done, elbow joints exactly the same way. Uh, the next spot you're going to do in conjunction with those, let me actually get the one that I ground off, the tops of the knees and the actual tops of the elbows. Uh, you're going to sand that down just a little bit. Uh, I think this is a thousand grit paper so that, that works perfectly fine, it doesn't really scuff it up. It just kind of gets it just a little bit down. Just so there's not as much of a rub, if there is a rub at all. The next piece we're gonna do is uh, the uh, the neck ball, the neck cylinder, the neck disc, I guess you would call it. Uh, you're gonna figure out what you wanna do with it. Uh, I'm gonna actually use a magnet on mine, so I'm gonna dremel this down the top of it just a little bit. I'll do that later. But I am going to dremel down the sides just a little bit, just a hair, so it doesn't touch the top of the neck once it's back into the torso. So and I'm going to do the same thing on the torso, just so the head moves freely. But you're going to grind away, just like you did on the, the elbows and the knee joints, and grind away just enough where uh, it's not going to touch. So get your needle nose pliers, uh, is the way I do it. Hold it just like that. Squeeze. Get your barrel, dr barrel dremel bit. <laughs> Alright, so that's pretty much what you're going to do uh, in terms of dremeling stuff, sanding stuff. Obviously, you, you would do both sides. Uh, I'm just I'm going to go back and do it in a little bit. That's pretty much what you're going to do. Remember to go back over it and sand it, uh, at least another sand job or two. Um, God, that sounds painful. That sounds like something a Tuscan Raider would give you, you know, for a couple of, couple of dollars. A sand dollar, I guess? I don't know. That's the currency in Tatooine. But you got all your pieces here. 
The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put a coat, because we're doing crossfire, remember, uh, put a coat of red paint on some stuff and just to uh, just to show you the next step of what I have to do. I'm going to actually paint the tops of these, uh, these pieces red. Uh, I'm going to put two or three coats on them. I'll show you uh, me painting a couple of times, but I'm not going to show the entire, you know, coatings of me putting coats on it. But yeah, I'm going to go do it until it's actually good and red. It'll be like the final red coat, at least before I put super glue on it. So the tops of those red and the insides of these red right here. I'm also going to be putting red on the inside of this right here and red all over the foot and red all over the inside of the bicep red all over this shoulder ball and red all over this thing after we do that we're going to be sealing all of the uh the parts with super glue all right so here's me putting some red on this stuff before you do that also definitely want to make sure to scoop all this down my cat's not actually in this room she you would have seen her try and get up on my desk but i'll sweep up later i just want to make sure nothing gets in my paint so make sure your desk is clean, get your stuff ready. I'm going to be doing these two pieces right now. Get your red paint ready. And Citadels, shake them up, get it nice and good. Pop it open. And it's got all the Citadels paints have a couple little uh, tabs in the back. So it'll stay open while you can paint with it. So get your paintbrush and hold this together. I paint all at once just because I hate painting stuff over and over again. So there's, get you some red. So there's my base coat. Throw that in your water jug. It looks a lot brighter than it really is, but you're gonna uh, give that another coat or two, especially this. The yellow kind of took the red pretty well. Also, you're not gonna see this a lot more than you will this if you're moving the leg. So give that a minute, let that, let that dry up a little bit. While I'm doing that, get your red back out. Also, I mentioned the last couple of videos that I have these pliers here and they work great for just straight up holding pieces while you're painting them. If you want to paint them that way, that's fine. But they work great for that too. So try to do all your red at once. Just don't paint until your brush gets completely dry. Always give it time. You can always go back and paint more. So what I'm doing now is just painting the inside of this bad boy right here. Remember, whatever figure you're doing, just the inside of that needs to be whatever color your base coat is. So grab you another pair of these right here that I have several pairs of. They're $3.99 at Harbor Freight Tools. So you can't beat that. Then you grab your leg, give it a little red.
Alright, so I got a lot of my pieces painted here. You can see all kinds of crap here. The crotch is uh is done, I believe, with the red. Uh, this mine just got some crap on it, so I should probably be taking one of these off that already has a piece on it. Get it to hold that piece. While that's drying, uh, I will show you the next step, which is to get your um, super glue. Quick fix super glue from Hobby Lobby. What you're gonna do is you're actually gonna go through uh, and get the outside of the ankle right there, the part that you sanded down, not the part that you dremeled down, but uh, just the outside tops when you put your foot back on there and you put it on there and it doesn't uh, rub away. You need your super glue. And there's that piece. Uh, you got your super glue on the outside of the ankle, and then you're gonna do that to pretty much every other piece you got here. Get your bicep. That's got enough of a red in it because it's got a red tint. So get your super glue. Coat the inside of it. Make sure you don't miss a spot because it might be a spot that rubs off. Shouldn't be because you dremeled it away. This is just kind of a, a final protectant. And what's good about painting super glue on it is it's glossy, it's wet, so it looks like you can see or you can like see where you've missed. So there's your bicep piece right there. Legs are done drying here. So at least dry to the touch. Biceps right there. Why not your crotch piece? That'll stand up on its own. Make sure to get every piece that's going to be touched by the, the, the upper leg. Then you're going to get your uh, tops of legs right there. Now that you've got enough red on that. Put some super glue on it. Be sure not to super glue the actual joint where the leg is. So spread it out as far as you can. It's alright if you get some super glue on the crease right there because you can always just rotate the leg and it'll pop it. It's not going to be a major thing unless you've had this wonderfully mixed custom paint and you fucked it up by rotating and it peeled the paint off. Right now we're still in preliminary stages. You can just get your base coat on your pieces that aren't going to be easy to paint later on. That's really what I'm doing right now. Once your shoulder right here has dried with your red, get your super glue again. Go over that. Making sure to get the edges because it might be somewhere where the figure might touch depending on how much he's going to get posed. The articulation gets used a lot around the edges right there. It's something you want to make sure that gets coated with the super glue. It should be dremeled away plenty. You never know. That's one of the first spots to actually go. So bam. There's your torso piece. So you get your, uh, your left foot, your red paint. Paint just the inside. You can paint the whole thing if you want to, but I just make sure that I get the part that I'm going to work on right now done. So you got some red inside the boot there, inside the inside of the foot, foot inception. So yeah, put that down, let it dry a little bit, get it nice and pretty. While you've got everything else drying, get some red paint. Smother this little bitch. Not smother, don't put too much on it, but whole thing, no purple. You want the or whatever color you're using, whatever color base figure. So basically you take your remaining pieces, the pieces that you haven't done anything with yet. Uh, you're gonna put your super glue all over that. You're gonna paint that I mentioned that earlier. Take your torso piece, actually have that super glued. If you get it glued together, you can always pop it apart. You're going to want to take your feet because you dribble it out around the ankle and you don't have to do anything with the ankle anymore. 
uh, you can actually just super glue in there and it'll protect the red that's in there. That'll make sure that you get that thing covered. You're gonna do the same thing with the hand, you're gonna do the same thing with the upper part of the leg. Any part that's gonna rub another part, you wanna put super glue on it, you wanna make sure that it gets covered. Not doused in super glue, but enough of a coat where it's gonna cover everything in there. Uh, and you dribble enough away where it's gonna be perfect when you get it put back together. You can also sand down the top of the neck right there. Not necessary, but a good choice sometimes. So. I'm still going to have to go back and dribble everything else out, and I still have to go super glue everything else together, um, or super glue coat it, so that's all I have for you right now for the prepping video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one where I'm going to actually have everything done, finished, all sides, both sides done and everything, uh, put it back together and show you how to actually assemble the figure after it's been prepped, how to fill the gaps in the, uh, the holes that we drilled in the side of Batrock, and have them ready for, uh, for paint and sculpt. I'm going to do a little sculpting too. So stay tuned, subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.